help help you, help you, Mr. Chairman, help any of the members. If there's anything you need or need to say as you go down this journey over the next couple months, we're here to help. Thank you. Thank you. Brian, anyone else from the county that I have missed? I think the chairman did want to say a few words. Please. Well, I, I just want to tell you how much I appreciate all of you being willing to do this. This is such an important task for us, uh, and what an impressive group of people we have uh, doing this. Um, I, I know all of you are busy, um, but this is really an important thing we're doing for Maricopa County, for our future. Um, I truly appreciate John Lewis being willing to chair this for us. It's uh, not like he didn't have other things to do, but uh, this is such an important task, and, and John recognizes that. And his leadership in, in Maricopa County, I think you all are familiar with, and, and I know he'll do a great job for you. But again, uh, I, I, couldn't, I could not imagine having a better group of people to address how we're going to move our criminal justice programs forward for the next 20 years. It's so important to us that, that, we, that we get community input, that we really understand the needs of the community, and I feel this is really the right group to do that for us. So thank you so much. Thank you. For our, our county leaders, uh, I think you know some of the committee members, and, and yet, in case you don't, Let's, let's do some introductions. I'm going to turn to my right. Jason, you'll be the one to start us. We'll go right down the line, and then Kimber will have you join us virtually to give an introduction. So Jason, please. Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, Jason Barron, I'm the Director of State Government Affairs for the Salt River Project. It is a uh, real honor to be uh, asked to serve on this committee and, and to be able to do that. I think just as a little bit of background, I've uh, been working in state and local public policy for the better part of two decades now. Uh, and in my spare time, um, co-chair of the Budget and Tax Committee for the Greater Phoenix Chamber of Commerce and been on board of directors for the Arizona Tax Research Association uh, for quite a long time now. So hopefully we'll be able to bring some of that perspective to the committee and uh, look forward to working with you all. I'm Don Noggle, and um, I really can't compare anything to that. I'm a citizen. Uh, I used to work for the county. Um, I'm a psychologist, and I would really like to be addressed as Dawn, as everybody else is being addressed by their front first names. Um, I previously did work um, as the mental health director for uh, Correctional Health Services. Um, so I have uh, 12 years of doing that and some understanding of the jail system. I'm happy to be here. Hello, and thank you, Chair. I'm Barb Broderick. I worked for the county for almost 20 years as the chief adult probation officer. And prior to that, I was with the Supreme Court as the director of probation. Um, so I'm very comfortable in this room. Um, and I have over 40 years of experience uh, in the justice system. So hopefully I can use some of that expertise to help us along. Thank you, Mr. Chair and other members of the committee. My name is Brian Tobin. I'm the fire chief of the Daisy Mountain Fire and Medical Department, which serves the communities in Maricopa County of Anthem, New River, Desert Hills. And we go as far north into uh, Yavapai County as Black Canyon City, 250 square miles. So prior to being at Daisy Mountain, I was at the Phoenix Fire Department for 37 years. So I came out of retirement to go back to work, as some other people in this room have done so. Failed that retirement, but I look forward to uh, serving on the committee and I appreciate the opportunity. And you can refer to me as Brian as well. I do best with that. Thank you. Kimber, if you could give us an introduction, please. Absolutely. Uh, Mr. Chair, thank you so much. Um, my name is Kimber Lanning, and I'm the CEO at Local First Arizona. Um, I look forward to working with all my colleagues. I, um, I bring a perspective from the business community and also serve as the co-chair of the Criminal Justice Committee for Greater Phoenix Leadership. So I will be learning from all of you and thanks for having me here. Thank you, Kimber. The committee, I think that you've seen this, but I'll just make note of this for our first public meeting. 
two other committee members that are not able to be with us today, Dr. Heather Carter. She is the Senior Vice Chancellor of Ex External Affairs for Maricopa County Community College District. And Marissa Calderon, uh, Chicanos por la Casa, and also CEO of Prosperity Now. And the Assistant um, Chief, Dan Butler, of the Mesa Police Department will also be joining us, uh, scheduled at 2 o'clock. Um, by way of introduction, I am the President CEO of, of an organization called the East Valley Partnership. Prior to that, had the opportunity to serve as Mayor of Gilbert from 2009 to 2016, and have been a resident of the East Valley of Gilbert since 1985. And so I've been here not only to see a lot of growth in Gilbert, but this Maricopa County. And so to our leaders, we appreciate uh, your efforts in this growing community. Are we the largest county, or one of the largest, or the fourth largest in the country? And so our, our discussions will be very important. I think as was mentioned, uh, we're looking for decisions that this committee will recommend that will have a great impact for the next 20 years. And that might be where I give a global statement of for a couple minutes we'll talk about uh, the next few months. Talking to Chairman Sellers, to Brian, and, and then you can give us some direction too. The scope of work is projected that it could be till November, and this is flexible uh, with the thought that possibly we would be ready to make a, a presentation of recommendations and suggestions and our thoughts and a summary of our committee meetings in December. And that could change, but that's, that's a tentative. And in asking the question, what, uh, what would be the meeting cadence? And one thought is possibly that we would be meeting twice a month. And this is going to be open for discussion possible once a month by remote means, a Zoom meeting, possibly once a month coming in person, if that's uh, a possibility. We realize that as we're trying to assess the schedules of nine of us, that uh, that would be a challenge, even for this meeting. It, it wasn't quite the right date, but I think we had about 20 other options, and so this was the best one. And in just a moment, we'll have some discussions about that. Uh, we will get an overview, and I'll in just a moment turn for, to Brian for additional uh, conversation about uh, beginning knowledge that we need, and then thoughts that Brian may have of information for us as we start to make some decisions. There is uh, a thought that a vice chair would be very helpful and that could be in the next few months if for some reason the chair is not here or late or uh, for some reason uh, we need the vice chair. And so to the eight other committee members, would welcome any of you to uh, consider. And at this point, we'll put Brian as the point of contact. If you have an interest in being the vice chair, I can promise you it'll be very rewarding and a wonderful experience. Um, maybe there's even a dozen Krispy Kreme donuts. I don't know, something like that. But uh, and uh, and so, if you could just let Brian know if you have an interest in doing that, and then we'll have some discussion. And at our next meeting, we'll be able to potentially um, vote on on a vice chair. So, with that overview background that that I just gave, some of the details. Oh, I, th I think uh, I did my introduction. So yes, Brian, please. Thank you, Mr. Chair. <clears throat> so first I'll summarize um, the current jail excise ta tax and then the charge that the Board of Supervisors has set for this committee. Um, in uh, the current jail excise tax is a voter approved one fifth cent tax. It was originally approved in 1998. Uh, Voters approved a one-time extension 
uh, for an additional 20 years in 2007. Um, the tax funds the construction of adult and juvenile facilities, maintenance and operation of the facilities, and other programs intended to reduce the expense of adult and juvenile facilities. In fiscal year 2024 budget, um, uh, the county anticipates $270 million uh, in jail excise tax revenue. Um, the jail tax is set to expire in 2027. Um, so the Board of Supervisors put together uh, this committee and came up with a charge. So I'll just quickly go over that. Um, first, uh, review statutory framework to fund public safety facilities, including alternatives to current funding, uh, property tax increase, uh, jail district, uh, and identify the most viable option. Review the promises that were made in Prop 400 and 411 and the outcomes. Uh, assess the existing adult and juvenile jail facilities, the current jail master plan, and current jail CIP to identify maintenance, capital, and expansion needs uh, in the next 20 years. Identify staffing needs for both short and long term. Uh, review probation and other recidivism programming and their impacts on public safety funding. And last, advise the board concerning other issues, public concerns, and matters of interest that may pertain to the planning and financing of jail facilities in Maricopa County. Uh, there were a uh, few other items that were discussed, but they're not in the official charge. Um, one was uh, looking into privatization, uh, cost programming, uh, healthcare, et cetera, uh, per diem rates, and then population projections, including the incarcerated populations. Thank you, Brian. I know that we'll get into a lot more detail, so not uh, needing that at this point, but in general, just a overall question, the 270 million that will be part of this year's budget, that is coming all from that half cent sales tax, is that right? The one fifth. Or one fifth, yeah. one fifth. Yes. Okay. And some of what you described in the charge will be with a growing county. Um, is that sufficient? Is that too much, too little? And, and so we don't need to answer that right now. That will come, but that'll be part of what we'll be looking at uh, because the county is growing and there may be future needs. There may be some needs that we hear about of uh, things we had to postpone. And, and so we look forward to that. At this point with what Brian gave as the uh, overview of the charge, do any committee members have any questions or comments at this point? I just want to reiterate what you said, uh, Chair, in terms of um, our meetings. It's going to be really incumbent upon us to try and make these. Um, having been a recipient of the jail exercise tax, it's critical to the operation of justice in this county. So us trying to make meetings wherever we are is going to be really important. So I just want to make sure everybody kind of hears that and why. Thank you. Any other comments? Thank you. Brian, let's take just a couple of minutes right now, the meetings. We've talked and we were uh, kind of scratching our heads saying, this is going to be a little bit of a challenge to make sure that we find a time that the nine committee members can meet. But the important thing we also said, Barb was, if we can get it on our calendars, then the probability goes up. And do any of you, I'll just borrow from a conversation with Brian where we said, okay, today is a Thursday and it's one o'clock. Um, a couple of committee members, this was not a good time, but again, this was the best time when you looked at options. Is this potentially a time that works for the six of us as spokespeople right now? Okay. And it's a Thursday. <laughs> and so, uh, of the Monday through Friday is a Thursday potentially also a good date. 
Okay, so that's a good start. And Kimber, I didn't get a chance to get any feedback, but the five of us just kind of looking at each other, potentially as Brian continues to explore, it might be to be looking at Thursdays at one o'clock. And Kimber, do you have any comments on that? No, that would, that would work for me, sir. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And it may be, do you want to bring up anything else at this point, Brian, or should we just offline have us start to work with you as you look at dates? Um, I can reach out to each of you and see if, uh, if I think we're hopeful to get the next meeting on the books as soon as possible. So even if it's uh, next Thursday or two Thursdays from now, um, uh, I'll reach out to you after this meeting and, and work through it. I think the other thing we want to talk through, um, Mr. Chair, was uh, format of the meeting and what everyone's comfortable with. Everyone is uh, has very busy schedules. And uh, so we want to make sure we use your time as efficiently as possible and make it as easy as possible for you all to participate, but also the public. Right. Part of what, uh, and you can elaborate on that, Brian, but just from talking to Brian about our meeting cadence, uh, I mentioned that probably the two of us brainstorming only that maybe meeting twice a month with one one meeting in person, one meeting possibly uh, through remote technology. How do the five committee members feel about that who are here? My comment would be I always think meeting in person is the most productive. And I think the potential that that would, should always be an option for us to meet in public because there's just so much more right. dialogue that takes place that way with the flexibility that if members cannot make in person, then we can do um, sure. electronic means as well. But I think the chair could make it clear that meeting together is very important for the production of the committee. So we should prioritize our meetings for Thursday afternoons at one o'clock the best we can, knowing that we can't always do it. Right, thank you. Okay. And we'll make sure that if, if you all wanna meet in public in some uh, can only meet virtually, We'll have that option, so okay. uh, whatever works. So if, um, Brian, if there were a virtual, a, a meeting that was planned to be virtual, and if committee members wanted to come, they could still do that. Because you, uh, you and other team members would be here, is that right? Yes. Okay, thank you. Other high housekeeping items that you m would want to bring up? No, I think the meeting dates were most important, um, just so we can, really get going, hit the ground running, um, and try and tackle as many things. But I think that's that's really the uh, big uh, housekeeping item we have. Okay. And and for today, uh, step one, get together, get to know, start to get to know each other, um, get a vision of meetings for the future, the overview of the charge. I believe committee members uh, were notified that today we will go into an executive session in, in a few minutes. And part of that is to give us some training on open meeting laws and our interaction, uh, a committee of nine. We will have some restrictions on interacting with each other uh, through emails or phone calls and we need to be instructed on that. And so that will happen in the executive session. So Brian, to today to give us, uh, again, details that are important for this first meeting. It could be even some of the things in the charge. We have some county leaders here. Are there some things today that would also be business items that are important for the public to, to hear? Today, we really set up the meeting as kind of an orientation type day. Make sure you all are comfortable uh, and have some uh, just baseline knowledge so we're all all starting on the same, uh, from the same place. Okay. An interpretation of that is that shortly we'll be going into executive session. So before we do that, let me turn again to my other five committee members and see if you have other questions, items that you feel would be important to bring up before we, we might do that. Mr. Ryan? Chair, just the charge of the committee, That's is that been the charge that the County Board of Supervisors has has voted on is is that where this is is that 
set as that's the charge and it doesn't go beyond that scope or do we determine that scope or who's determined the scope of the committee? That's a great question. I, Brian, do you want to answer that or we've got our other two team members here that have been involved? Uh, maybe I'll start and if I miss anything, I'll turn it over. Um, the uh, Board of Supervisors did vote on this charge. Uh, they wanted to make it as broad as possible so you guys really feel free to dive deep into all the different issues. Um, and so that's that's kind of where all these different items came from. Um, but Zach or Jen, any? No, Brian, I think you put it perfectly. We wanted this to be as broad as possible so that this group could do real work, um, get real advice from consultants and other partners in the justice system, and then bring a real recommendation back to the Board of Supervisors. Thank you. Any other comments from County Manager? Okay, thank you. Thank you, Brian. Did that answer your question? Anything else you want to? No, no, okay. Thank you. Okay. Committee members, anything else? Kimber, okay. Thank you. With that, and so the public will know, in just a moment I'll ask for a motion to go into executive session before we do that. Um, my understanding is when, once we go into the executive session, we will not be coming back, so the public will know at that point, the public meeting will have ended. Is that correct? Um, we are going to, I believe, hold the meeting open uh, and then adjourn after executive okay. session. So after executive session, we'll come back here. All right. Very good. Thank you. Is there a motion to adjourn to an executive session? Second. So moved and second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. We'll, we will move to executive session. Brian, thank you for your, your leadership. Uh, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. With that motion, second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Meeting adjourned.